I definitely have to give you an intro. So uh, <clears throat> let me just clear the pipes. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> oh, man. I, I might need a couple of takes on this one. Who deep breaths. <sighs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to a comedy advice podcast with me, Stefan Satani, and joining me today, a very special guest. She started off selling jewelry and now she's a coveted comedy gem her dry bar special so yummy has garnered millions of views and she's coming to phoenix arizona april 29th through may 2nd everybody please welcome leanne morgan oh what a wonderful intro you darling thing thank you oh well what a wonderful wonderful person you are and i just have to say before we get started with anything huge fan and i also I was so excited to call my mother when I told her that you were coming on the podcast because she is also a very big fan of yours. Oh, Stefan. <laughs> yeah, are you? Now, I, get, I, I believe you with your mama, but surely you with that beautiful hair, you have not been watching me. I don't believe that, honey. You, you could get out and watch the hippest, funnest people, probably like Nikki Glaser. <laughs> people like that, that are not talking about menopause or hormones they're talking about you know nasty stuff and because you've still got your hormones i just can't imagine that you are watching my stuff are well, you i am i am and it is delightful Liam. because first <laughs> off it's just a multi-layered beautiful comedy lasagna let's call it <laughs> and, <laughs> and my mom, she, well, I also, I come from a family of four brothers and sisters and I, or five, I'm the oldest and I have four brothers and sisters. My sister, and she listens to this. She's not the nicest at times, especially to my mom. So I've been in there and I am, I am similar to your son where I am usually uh, the nicer the one, I guess you could say. Yes. The yes. peacemaker and you diffuse. Exactly. Uh -huh. exactly and then your sister is saying terrible things to your mama and hurting her feelings but she can't help it exactly you know, that that's, that's why I, that's why i grew the long hair so that if it got too confrontational i could just cover my face <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> but, <laughs> but i i also i wanted to talk about because i'm really excited you're coming to phoenix and i know that before the pandemic started you had a hundred city tour lined up and then the poor covid went and ruined a lot of things including the tour dates and i wanted to ask how have you been passing the time i'm sure it was a little bit of a sting but have you been able to find things to be able to kind of cope and and find silver linings to it well yeah i mean i, I it was a big deal my darling yeah. it was a big deal and i it, the yeah. biggest thing in my career and so i think i've grieved i think i've I know that I've eaten myself to death. I started out drinking and I'm not a drinker. I got to where I made margaritas and I drank wine thinking this is not going to last long. And then, and then, oh, no. then I ate, I cooked a big gob and I ate it. I don't know. I think I was just filling this hole with something and I'm not, yeah. you know, thank goodness I didn't take dope, but I mean, I just, <laughs> It was, it was a kick in the teeth. It really, I look back on it and I think, oh, I handled it well. I don't think, mm -hmm. I think I, I handled it fine, but I think that I was just in a fog and kept thinking it's going to be get better. It's going to get better. And anyway, I do think it's getting better now. Yes. yes. And, but I, the silver lining out of it was my little mama has been sick for two years and had, a, oh. she had a stroke and she's doing well but she need, they need help. My little daddy is 81 and they, and they just need help. And so I've been able to go and, and stay with them and help during this. Cause I was on the road before mm -hmm. and couldn't, you know, I was going, I was going and helping them and it was about to kill me. Cause I go from the road. Sometimes I didn't even get to go back to my house and see my husband and my children. Wow. And I'd go straight to my parents. So I was burning the candle at both ends. So this way, yeah. I have been able to spend precious time with my little mama, Lucille, and my dad, and my children here in Knoxville. Because see, my baby child is 23, and she graduated from makeup school in Manhattan for television and film and special effects at this fancy school. And then she was supposed to go to L.A. and uh, 
and COVID, she graduated a week before New York like blew up with COVID. So we got her out a week before the bad. I mean, bad. Oh. And then wow. she came to our house and she's been living with us. And that is a blessing. But like everybody's getting tired of each other. And she <laughs> and it's about to that's about to come to a head. So she she's tired and rolls her eyes, but she's the one that came down here and, and tried to help me figure out where my Gmail was. And she goes, Mom, you've had this computer, you know, for I mean forever. Why don't you just order you one? I go, I know. But it's daunting to do something new. But anyway. So yes, there has been silver linings, but it has been a kick in the teeth. I'll be honest. I think this is a time that we've all had to just think, was this really happening? You know, during the whole mm -hmm. thing, I thought there is a pandemic happening. <laughs> it was just <laughs> crazy. But anyway, do you feel like it's getting better, my darling? I do. I, I do feel like it's getting better. And I, I know that at least... It's getting better. Plus, I feel like people have been able to adapt and businesses have been able to adapt where it seems like we can feel more comfortable in spaces. And, and um, we feel like there's a, I feel like there's a little bit more trust that I have in if I'm going to a place um, like comedy clubs, for example, in Phoenix, I think they've done an excellent job at cornering things off and, and um, setting certain capacities, etc. But I also feel like the U.S. is doing a good job at uh, setting out vaccines and people are getting herd immunity. It seems better to me. I am yeah. not a, a doctor or specialist, but from my perspective, it's it's getting sunshiny and I see a couple rainbows coming out. So <laughs> <laughs> I do, too, you angel. You make me feel better. I do, too. And I got my second vaccine. Congratulations. Thank you. In Tennessee, I mean, I, it's pretty much open. Anybody over 16 can get it. Oh, so, well. Yeah, so I went and got it. And my kids, not, uh, uh, my son and his wife have not yet, but my um, all my other kids, because my, my middle child works at East Tennessee Children's Hospital. So she got it right away. And then my, my husband got it because he's a volunteer. He cuddles drug-dependent babies at the hospital. So he got it. <laughs> and then my baby she volunteers there and she got it they offered it to people so anyway we're i think we're you're right and my little mom and daddy have gotten it and they've got a dollar general store in their little town of 500 people and let me tell you that dollar general store is like the sax fifth avenue of dollar general stores Ooh. and my mama that's all she's cared about is can i get back to that dollar general store and, <laughs> and look at the tide and so now I feel like we can go and do and she can get out, you know? Oh, that is, that is so nice because it's, it's really tough, especially I have my parents and they've been wanting to get out for, and they just got vaccinated as well. So they're feeling a lot better and I'm feeling less stressed, worrying about them. It's, it, I feel like it's very strange. I don't know if your children were the same, but me and my siblings, we were, talking to my parents and I was saying, okay, are you guys going to be home before midnight? What's going on here? Where are you going? Who are you going with? And uh, sometimes we had to ground them for their own sake. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so it was- Well, uh, I feel, I see I, me here, I'm taking care of my little elderly parents and then my yeah, kids, yeah. Um, yeah, they don't, yeah. I, but you know, I just worked in North Dakota, Fargo, North Dakota, and they were darling. And the mm -hmm. beautiful, young, probably 28, 29 year old that was my contact person and took care of me, she has not seen her little mom and daddy. And they're living in Arizona, playing golf and tennis, and they're active and they're only in their 60s, which, you know, uh -huh. may be old to some people, but to me at 55, I think that's not old. Anyway, she has not seen them in a year. So she was going, she got vaccinated, got the Johnson and Johnson, and she was going the other week. And I'm so glad that I've been able to see my kids. I mean, we just kept going. I've had a grandbaby in this. That's another. I've had a grandbaby and he is doing well. And he is Aww. in the 80 something percentile for his weight and height and his head's normal. And so Aww. I'm tickled. He is yummy. <laughs> he's got fat legs. We just sit and chew on him. And so he's good. Aww. And his little mama and daddy are good. And so, yeah, there's been a lot to him to happen, Aww. you know, that's good. But I'm still, you know, I, that tour, I spent that money in my head. I'll just tell you, I started spending that money in my head 
And I thought, I'm going to get these toilets fixed for the first time since these children left for college. You know, we yeah, put everybody yeah. through college. We've been broke. My husband's mm -hmm. tight, doesn't like to spend money. I'm like, I'm finally fixing these toilets. I don't want to have to just hold that thing down or take that thing off the bag. Uh -huh. You know, fill the water <laughs> up. I'm sick of that. I thought, oh my gosh, I might be a movie star and I can fix the toilets. But anyway, <laughs> enough about that, you doll. You want to talk about fun stuff. Oh, and no, I love but... Phoenix, Arizona. And I, you know what? We almost moved to Phoenix when my babies were little. My husband's company put him over in New Mexico and Arizona. And he was out uh -huh. there for a year. And I flew out several times and we looked at homes and I loved it. And then he did so well there because he's anal retentive uh, type A achiever that he got over, they, they promoted him again and put him over all of South Texas. So we never got to move there, but I loved it. And I love that club and I think they're so smart and I love the desert and I like yes. to go and hike. And I just think oh. it's so pretty there. Oh it, yeah. My wife and I, so my wife, she's from Brazil. I'm from here. And we ended up meeting when we both lived on the East coast. So we were both working in New York city and we met each other and fell in love. And then we moved back here and it's uh, yeah. Oh and now we love God. hiking and, and just being little desert rats, little kangaroo rats. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, it's a great time. I love it. And you know what? I haven't been to, the only memory I have of Tennessee, unfortunately, is my my parents and uh, the whole family. We did a road trip and we were going to New Jersey. And on the highway, as we were passing through Tennessee, the the trailer jackknifed and ended up bashing our windows out. And we got in. And fortunately, by the grace of God, we did not hit anybody and we were all fine. But I was oh terrified. God. So I used oh to have the shakes when I heard Tennessee. But now I'm better. <laughs> Well, oh, I hope you come back because we are pretty. You know, Tennessee is like three states. You know, it's long. So we have Memphis, and that's Elvis, barbecue, the blues, very mm. hot, muggy, kind of like Mississippi. Then we've got Middle Tennessee, where I was raised, Nashville, country music, um, farmland. Then mm. I'm in no I live in Knoxville now, which is the Smoky Mountains. So it's very hill hills and mountains and a and a so all three of them are very different. All three areas mm -hmm. of Tennessee and, and politically they're different. Um, huh. The landscape, the, the landscape, all that's very different. The people, but all the people are sweet. We're not butthole people. Oh. We're really not. We're sweet people and we want everybody to be all right. And we, we, we will fix you a casserole, fry you a chicken. If you need somewhere to stay. I mean, I think we're very sweet people. Oh, I do. I would love that because when we lived in New York, they were not sweet people at all. And I, <laughs> I had to learn not to make eye contact and smile at strangers because that was not a thing that you could do. It was rough. I've always heard that. I love New York and I love to go visit, even though I have flirted with Italian men there. I do think the Italian men love women from the South that are blonde with big butts. And so I've always been popular there, but I don't make <laughs> eye contact with most people there, you know, running and doing and all that they're doing. But anyway, I love to go I, visit there and I want it to come back. I want it to be all right, you know? Yes, yes, yes. I agree. I definitely agree. I, I wanted to ask one quick question too, because I know that you had said, hmm, you might not be the type of person that watches my special and comedy. I was going to ask, because I have not had the fortune of seeing a Leanne Morgan show live. Is the audience a little different? What is the audience like? Because I'm imagining it different than uh, a typical comics following. Yes. Okay. So before this mean stupid COVID hit and I was selling out uh -huh. um, in all these clubs, these wonderful clubs and these club owners would say to me, oh my gosh, where have you been? Because I draw a very, um, a group of people who really have not gone to comedy clubs much. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the, the wonderful thing that used to make me ball my eyes out was that there would be like a little elderly mama, say she was like 75, and then her daughter 
and then the granddaughter would all come like three generations oh. would come and the because they felt safe i guess with me and uh-huh. you know, they wouldn't be embarrassed if they brought their grandmother and then you know you could bring your child or whatever when i say child 18 20 year old girls and i think it was that mean girl mean girl clip like everybody <laughs> people that has uh that has reached i don't know how many millions of people but um and that is so common in a family you know for the daughter to be mean and when she's 16 and rip everybody in your butthole okay so <laughs> the columbia club owners would say to me link and they your audience they have money to spend because you know they're i don't know if they'd be boomers i don't know what you call them i don't even know what i am i'm 55 anyway but they've got they're they're decent people they're not going to get drunk and fight in the parking lot and yeah. they spend money and they act right not that everybody that goes to comedy clubs are out fighting in the parking lot but i've seen some right right yes lot. so anyway they are very <laughs> um you know educated sweet fun people that have not gone to many comedy clubs or if any it and sounds so like wow they- to see Oh, I see. It sounds like they almost help clean up, wash their own dishes after the the meal too. <laughs> Just good people. <laughs> they are, and they're darling. I my fans, and and I don't. I guess I mean what do I know, but this is what I think. I think that I speak to this demographic that nobody else is speaking to. I think that they are like the nobody's thought of them. And yeah. they, they've just been passed over. And mm-hmm. and it may have even been the women that were married to the guys that maybe even liked Blue Collar, Jeff Foxworthy, Larry the Cable Guy, maybe, maybe or like Jim Gaffigan, um, Brian Regan, but it's the the women. Now I get a lot of I get a lot of men, a lot of couples, but uh-huh. but they're just everyday people who I think or no one speaking to them. I think I've I've hit a niche. Yes, yes, I I think so too. And it's it's really interesting to me because I doing this podcast, I'll watch a lot of specials and I'll see a lot of comedy. And I think that out of my comedians that I've I've interviewed and seen, I think you and Steve Trevino. I don't know if you've heard of him. Uh huh. I feel like you guys are are incredibly talented and some of my favorite comedians because you're able to take the gold from the, like what's right in front of us. And I feel like sometimes comedians, they might try and stretch or use shock humor or um, different things like that. But I feel like, you know, you being able to talk about just your family and the dynamics there and be able to put this very uh colorful not not in a in a uh, profane way but like a, this colorful language on it and just make it everything you everything you say on stage is just hilarious it's not even there's no punchline you're just constantly getting jabbed with comedy it's wonderful oh, you angel well, honey thank you lord you know i have i've had people ask me well you know how's your writing process and all that yeah. i have little i have purses full of like checkbooks and on the back of the checkbook receipt I'll ha- I'll put down a little bit and it's just scribble and then I'll stick it in a purse and then I can't find it and I mean I'm so unorganized and I really <laughs> I, I have friends that just pain over and they they know how to write comedy and they mm-hmm. they're like Jerry Seinfeld they can look at a cotton ball and do a bit and I don't have that talent that's not what I do I have to just look and you know, something that happened with my kids or my husband and, mm-hmm. you know, something like going to a Def Leppard and Journey concert with my husband, you know, just that kind of stuff, which right now he's had a foot surgery yesterday. And let me tell you, he's a pill. And so I'm thinking <laughs> the whole time I'm tending to him, I just, I mean, he gives me a lot of material. He really does. <laughs> I put on makeup for you and eyelashes. I mean, because I thought, Lord, I look sick because I've been up all night with him, him. and he is a pill. Oh, well, you know what? If if you didn't tell me anything, I would have thought you had a wonderful day because you look amazing and it looks like you just woke up ready to go for for the podcast. (laughs) You doll. (laughs) (laughs) I and I was going to ask too because uh oh with with the material that you're getting from your husband and your your daughters and and son 
how did they, because I know you've been doing this for a while, how did they feel at the start of you talking and, and joking about them? And then how do they feel now? Has it changed or were they ever against yeah. it? Okay, well, you know, I've been doing this 22 years. Mm -hmm. And my when they were little, I did a lot with Nick at Night. And got, they were on TV. They came to our house, featured them, that kind of thing. They all loved it and thought that was fun. Then middle school hit. And they were like, do not speak my name. <laughs> do not talk about my puberty on the radio Jonathan, Jonathan heard that you were talking about my puberty on his way to his orthodontist appointment and I was like oh and so I it, that was a very dry time it was a very dry dry time then in mm. high school they were kind of they thought I was really stupid and and I've got mm. precious children but I remember them thinking whatever we don't care and then then uh and but then college, they were like, we don't care, mom, whatever you want to do. And then now they're like, yes, dig, dig, dig. We don't care because they they need help financially. Anyway, I, nobody cares. Everybody's like, you do what? But you know what? This is the thing. I say that. And I'm joking about that. They are yeah. all pretty secure yeah. in themselves. They're all funny. They've got a yeah. good sense of humor. They know what's funny. They they say, oh my gosh, mom, you need to put that in your act. So they've all been oh. wonderful. They really have. And I think my son, who is from heaven, but he went off to college and I was starting to do, I did dry bar special and that, you know, kind of got some traction. And even mm -hmm. though, let me tell you, I flew, my manager said to me, Lynn, there's this thing out of Salt Lake City I don't think anybody will ever see it. You might as well go do it. He goes, no, we, nobody knows what it is. It's no big deal. You're going to be in Dubuque, Iowa anyway that week. I had a horrible looking spray tan. I had a thyroid nodule that was poking out. So if you ever look back at that dry bar comedy special, my spray tan had come off my chest. Then I had a choker on. It was cocked up. It was like cattywampus up on top of my thyroid nodule. I could not have looked or felt or thought. I, I was rusty. I don't know how I even did that special. We thought nobody would ever see it. And then, and I still look at it and cringe and think, oh my gosh, I'm, I, I know I've got to be better than that. That is, I just thought it was terrible. And then look what all it did. But anyway, Oh my boy my was at Barry College when all that was going on. And he yeah. came to, and saw me at a show and it was sold out. And and he like looked at me like, what is it? Like he'd never known. And it was just funny to watch him. Aww. Just like, wow, mom. And so anyway, they've all been darling. And my husband, um, I told him when he was he was on he's on Percocet right now with his surgery and and high as a kite, and I said, I told you we should have moved to LA when these kids were little and we could have lived in a, in a trailer, and because he's in the mobile home industry, and I said we yeah. could have lived in an RV, I could have <laughs> cooked off a hot plate and I could have made it before now, and he and he, you know he was high he didn't even pay attention to me but anyway. <laughs> It all works out because now I'm 55. I've raised these children. I mean, I was able to stay at home with them. I, you yeah. know, I toured with different little tours. I uh -huh. had television deals for my own sitcoms that didn't make it. Like I've always had my foot. I've been in yeah. the game. You know, mm -hmm. I never lived in LA or New York, but I've always been in the game. I've had wonderful things happen to me. Series six M radio show, all all kinds yeah. of but I got to raise these children and and my and Brian Dorfman that owns Zanies and several clubs across the United States, he said when I first got started, he goes, Liam, Roseanne Barr, he goes, You've got three babies. You cannot, he goes, You can't come up through clubs because Roseanne Barr did it. And she raised those children in a station wagon in the parking lot and they're messed up. And that, that always stuck with me. I was like, uh, I can't leave these children, you know. So I, I had to do it a different way. I couldn't, I did clubs, but not many. I did maybe mm -hmm. three or four a year. And then I had to fill in with private corporate things or churches or whatever I could get because um, I wanted to raise these children first. You know, that was the most important thing to me. Wow. And, and that's so incredible seeing the great things that you did, especially hearing the behind the scenes on the dry bar special, because that was 
really good. <laughs> um, and, and just be able to hear because I had heard on some other podcasts too about those deals where for one reason or another writer strike or coronavirus things kind of fell through. But I mean, you've always with Southern fried chicks too touring. I mean, it just seems like you had, <laughs> sorry. Well, you oh, honey, you have read on me. Yeah, I've always had something. We had I, we had Southern Fried Chicks, and that was going yeah. off the blue collar thing. They were trying to find something with women, and that yeah. and that really I opened. I was really the opener, and because mm. those two other women were very seasoned comedians, and so I learned a lot from them. And I and that was kind of my club days where I seasoned, you know, got all that. And then mm -hmm. um, yeah, there were times I couldn't get arrested. There were years I could not. I mean, years where it was. And then I would get, I'd think, well, maybe I should go to work at Target. And then, honey, I'd get a deal out of LA with ABC and Warner Brothers. Or I'd get a deal with TV Land and, and yeah. um, creator of Roseanne and Home Improvement. I mean, just crazy things. I've had a ball. I mean, when I tell you, I really have had a ball. There's been times where I thought, maybe this isn't going to happen. But then deep down, I always knew it. I envisioned, I envisioned this when I was five. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I really did. I saw it. And so there's been times where I thought, well, maybe I was crazy. Maybe I was like those American Idol kids that think they can sing. Maybe I'm a loon. And then, you know, <laughs> something, somebody else, some big dog in Hollywood would say, we think we can do a sitcom, you know, and it keep me in the business. Yeah, so it has, it's yeah. been crazy. And now I'm 55 and I, and I, and I, I think that's important for people to know it's never too late. Mm -hmm. It's really never too late, you know, and, and people like Brian Regan, who is killing it, you know, I mean, I'm a big fan of his, but, uh, Jim Gaffigan, I mean, all these people that are in their fifties, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it's not, yeah. it, you don't have to be 20. Yeah. Yeah, ex exactly. Especially maybe if we were a thousand years earlier, if you were 30, that was like uh time to go. But now <laughs> it's, I mean, we, I I'm 32, but I feel like that's the new 21. I, it's amazing. Right. Amazing. Honey, Gwyneth Paltrow's going through menopause. Lord, look at her, Jennifer Aniston. I mean, it's just, it's, yeah. you know, there, it's just not like when I was growing up, my grandmother was 50 and in a house dress and I thought she's about dead. It's just <laughs> not like that anymore. You know? Lord, she yeah. lived to be 80 something, but. Oh man. Yeah. It, it, it's so true. And I feel that is something that I have personally, I mean, even just doing this podcast or other things that are long-term that I'm focusing on, there are those moments, I'm sure this happens to everybody where you just feel like, is nothing going to happen? Is, is this just all for nothing? Am I just a big silly goose? <laughs> and it, <laughs> It's it's nice to hear those words of wisdom and, and advice, Leanne, because I feel like, you know, if you keep going sometimes, and I've also heard this, don't ask God or don't ask the universe how you get to where you want to go. Just ask them for it. And then sometimes it'll open a door that you didn't know was there. So Right, right. And it's all in God's timing. And, you know, yeah. and I can look back on that and think, when there were times where I think, am I, what am I doing? What am I doing? I, maybe I should give this up or whatever. This is too hard or nothing's happening or whatever. And, but mm -hmm. my kids needed me. I don't know. It's just perfect timing when I look back on it and things happen. And now, you know, I've, my kids are all okay. They don't need me. My husband's mm -hmm. okay. I'm okay to go out on the road. It's just, and you know, I feel good. I can do it. I can do that kind of schedule. Which mm -hmm. they told me I needed to train like I was going to Olympics and I need to quit eating white flour and sugar and I need to build up my stamina. So there's, I mean, I'm still working on that. But anyway, uh, the COVID <laughs> really did a number on me as far as that, honey. I, all of a sudden I couldn't fit in my pants. And, I, and this woman was helping me with colors on stage, what would make me pop. And she mm -hmm. said, put on your blue jeans every day. She said, everybody's putting on this leisure wear and they don't realize how much weight they've gained. And she goes, get up and put your tight blue jeans on. It's going to be uncomfortable, but wear those every day. She said, because mm -hmm. then you're going to realize what in the world you've done. But anyway, you oh. look like you've kept your weight off, honey. You don't have to worry about that. These cheeks are a little extra, <laughs> extra rosy and, and full figured. For... <laughs> <laughs> 
I was, and my wife and I, we were, uh, I, I don't know how comfortable I feel saying this on air in front of everybody, but we were doing a booty building workout, my wife and I, because my wife wanted to do it. And she was like, you're going to do it with me. And I said, yes, honey, because happy wife, happy life. And so we were doing a booty building workout. And then um, we kind of stopped that, but I feel we've been able to maintain it a little bit. And I, once a week, I'll try the blue jeans because <sighs> it's like joggers and sweats and it's so comfortable. But then that shocking surprise, like you said, at the end, after you put on your blue jeans, you're like, Whoa, where did this come from? So I know, I know. Are you able in Phoenix to get out and walk and not Somebody not yes. throw a rock at you. Can you get out and walk and hike and do? Because I think that's important. We can in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that that's one thing that I'm really thankful for that we moved here from the East Coast because here there are so many hikes and places to walk. So my wife and I, what we'll do is we'll walk for about a mile to the nearest Rita's and get an ice cream <laughs> and then we'll walk back. So we'll burn a tenth of the calories. <laughs> Well, we've got right. the Smoky Mountains and all the trails. And at first, my nice. husband's like, you need to wear a mask. And I'm like, who are you going to get COVID from? A bear? A bush? There's nobody <laughs> out there. Yeah, ex exactly. That's the same thing I'm thinking, too. With I like with to be able to breathe, you know. So and that's been good to get out and when there's nobody around and hike and do. And I, you know, when I was in Phoenix before, I hiked mm -hmm. that big going up that hill at Arizona State University. Oh, you know, uh, big, big? was it Papago Park that it, it was it like kind of a round mountain or was it more edgy? I think it may be edgy, but you can okay. see Arizona State University down below. Oh, and the Iron yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I forgot what the mountain is called, but a mountain, maybe. Maybe my good friend is a professor at, at uh, Arizona State. Okay. And she and I used to bartend, honey, in the early 90s. And we were both lost and nuts. Anyway, we've both, you know, found our way. Anyway, she lives out there. And we, she said, yeah, let's do this hike. And I mean, we both were like sucking wind. It was straight up. But anyway, it was nice to get it. So I'm excited to come back. And the Iron Man was going on the last time I was there. Oh, And the Iron Man oh, wow. was going through. Some kind of crazy mess was going on in the town. <coughs> oh, man. You, well, you know what? Near CB Live, if you're staying near that area, my wife and I live about 10 minutes away from that area. So we have some cool places to hike. One of them is called Lookout Mountain. And it's not too high or exhausting because it's got some trails <laughs> where you can just walk around the mountain. You can kind of walk up, uh, but not all the way. And then there's one that's more challenging, but... That's a Ooh, nice one. To, okay. Uh, and there's no yeah. mountain lines, right? Not none that I saw. So <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think you're good. Uh, if if there are, busy. yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, if there are any, they're probably city lions now. So they're more <laughs> um, worried about getting to work on time, but anyway, that's, <laughs> that's a great place to hike. And then there are a couple others, but yeah, that, that, uh, that area is beautiful. And as well as the Tempe one, but that one's just straight up. So I've done that one before and regretted it because it was so high. But <laughs> I tell you what uh, else I love, Tucson, old Tucson. We took our babies oh. when they were little to old Tucson and watched people do cowboy stuff and shoot and do where they used to make all those old movies. And I just think it's so pretty out there. I oh. always wanted to live out there, but anyway, that wasn't in the cards. But oh, I do, okay. I love all y'all's houses and the clay roofs and all that. And there's lemon trees and all that stuff. Anywho, um, but you don't see, and I want to find out, are you going to have children by this girl from Brazil? Because that would be pretty nifty. <laughs> we are thinking of, of um, having a couple children. So it is in the cards. We're going to wait maybe a year or two, but we're, yes, we're going to have some. some oh, ones. you got to, how beautiful. I'm excited. I mean, yes, beautiful on her side. They're going to be little long haired goofballs from my side and they'll. <laughs> but your mom and daddy will be so tickled, honey. So tickled. They've stuck. Yes, you're the sweet one. You're the sweet one and you've acted right and they're not scared yeah. of you. Yes. 
I get that's exactly it, honey. Right. That's just like my Charlie, precious. Just mm -hmm. should have been a therapist. He really could be. He diffused his fights. My girls, we all, we all love so deeply, and we fight like dogs. And then the next minute, we're kissing. You know, it's just crazy. <laughs> but it's psychotic. But anyway, yes, I knew you probably would ask about comedy, and you've had all these wonderful people on that are the cool kids at the cafeteria that have been at the comedy store and all these things. Saying I've never gotten to be in that because I was a mama in Knoxville, Tennessee, but I've watched the documentaries and I've met a lot of those comics. I just mm -hmm. haven't gotten to live out there and do all that. Oh, you know what, though? Instead of hanging out in the cafeteria with the cool kids, I feel like we're on a nice horseback ride in the Appalachian Man Mountains and we're just trotting along, having just the best time. And I have to say, that is one thing when I saw you on stage. Uh, and your comedy clips, I felt like you made everybody feel better, lighter, happier. And uh, when I heard you on different interviews and podcasts, I felt like you did that to the people and you're doing it right. It's in the moment. I am seizing the moment right now because I am feeling happier and lighter. And I was going to wait till the end of the podcast, but I thought, why? Why wait till the end of the podcast? Because it's just so delightful. I'm just oh you beaming. angel well honey thank you thank you <laughs> we can talk about my sinful days in the 80s if you need to I know that y'all you've had all these cool comedians on see I always oh it cut out just a little bit in Huntsville Alabama he did a guest spot for Jimmy Fallon on my show oh oh sorry it cut out just oh, a little bit I didn't Okay, are we better now? Yes, now it seems like we're back on track. Oh, it, her internet. Okay, oh, we oh, just did a bunch of stuff to our house and um, and I love the guy who did it, but I think he messed with my internet. Anyway, what I was saying was, I, I got to backstage talk to Nate Bargatze. You know who Nate is, big love deal. Nate. You know, you got love his at Netflix, yeah. Okay, well, he was he came and did a guest spot on my show for Jimmy Fallon. They wanted they filmed him so that he could be on Jimmy Fallon, and, and it got on and all that. And um, we were sitting backstage, and I said, I'm not one of the cool kids in the cafeteria. He goes, Lena, I've never been a cool kid in the cafeteria. I'm like, what are you talking about, Nate? Because <laughs> you've been in New York, you know, for years. And yeah. um, and it's just funny to me that we, I guess it's insecurity and comedians and we must be insecure. We wouldn't be doing all this. But anyway, everybody feels like they're not a cool kid at the cafeteria. But um, I look at him and I think, of course you are. But he said, I don't think I am. But I did, this is one of my credits that I feel pretty good about is that I got mm -hmm. to go to Just for Laughs, Montreal. And that was always a big deal. So I got to meet a lot of people there and, um, and so I've always loved comedy. I always have, I've always loved watching specials. And I grew up with my, you know, my mom loves comedy and would we watch Sarah Night Live, Filthy, uh -huh. Uh -huh. John Belushi, The Bees. You probably, you, were, you weren't born yet. It was filthy. And my mom would let me watch it. And my dad would get so mad. But, but anyway, I've always loved it. I've always loved to be around it. I love to talk about it. I love to meet comedians, you know? Oh, and, and I was going to say too, or I wanted to ask, because I think it's so interesting of how you kind of took the steps to be able to start doing comedy. And, um, I'd love if you shared a little bit about that selling jewelry ended up being a, like an open mic of sorts for you. Yes. And, uh, okay. So my husband, I met my husband at the university of Tennessee. He decided to buy a used mobile home business in Bean Station, Tennessee, had never walked in a trailer. It was the first Iraq thing with George W. Bush's daddy. And so it was uh, in the early 90s. And the, so the economy was unstable. Everything was, you know, freaky. And so he couldn't get a job at an MBA school that he wanted. He could get a job, but he, he'd mm -hmm. gone to MBA school. So anyway, he bought this used mobile home business, which I think is so important because here I came from the country. I wanted to be a big city girl. I always knew I was going to be in comedy or show business. Didn't know how. And yeah. then Modern, if he doesn't go and buy a used mobile home. Anyway, he moves <laughs> me to Bean Station. And I mean, not far from there, 
beautiful country, but not far from there, people didn't know who the president was. I mean, when you're, I'm talking about in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains where it is very oppressed. So anyway, <laughs> he moves me up there and, and I had my first baby, Charlie, and I want to stay home with him and nurse. And um, mm -hmm. I started selling jewelry and I don't even care about jewelry. And my friend said, Lynn, you can make a little money for your sale. You can meet people because my husband doesn't chat. So I, I'm up here in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. So I start selling jewelry in women's homes. And I, instead of doing talking about jewelry, I, I kind of develop a shtick. And I have this material I do. And I talk about breastfeeding and hemorrhoids. And I'm going to kill my husband because he doesn't wake up with a baby <laughs> in the night. And women thought I was funny. And they started booking parties with me, these jewelry parties, like a year in advance. And a woman peed on a couch one night. And I thought, <laughs> I swear, that was that was a moment for me that I thought, oh my gosh, I've got it. She just peed on a couch. I've got, <laughs> I've got it. Like I know I can do this. That was like a that was a moment for me that I thought, I've got it. I can do it. Anyway, the company noticed that I was speaking, I mean that I was booking these parties so far in advance that they yeah. asked me to start speaking at their big things their big regional and national things. Well, then women were in that audience and they would come up to me and say, you need to be a stand-up comedian. And it gave me the confidence. I always yeah. knew I could be, but uh -huh. there was no comedy club. I thought here, I'm, you know, now I've got a baby and I wanted to have another baby. I went on and had another baby. Uh -huh. I would nurse her on the toilet in Opryland Hotel and hand her to my mama and then go up there and talk. And anyway, oh it gave me the confidence to say, all right, I don't know when, I don't know how, but I'm going to do this. Then we moved to San Antonio, Texas, and there was a club, and I got up and did open mic, scared me to death, and then I, um, they put me up on the late show. Everybody was high on marijuana. I was, uh -huh. Lord, I was up with little children at six o'clock, getting them ready for school, then I'd be at, on stage wow. at night. Everybody was high on marijuana. I was talking about doo, -doo balls on the T-ball field <laughs> with other comics in the lineup that were so, you know, key up and nasty and all that. And I was yeah. talking about doo, doo balls. And then Austin, How long, Texas, by the way, how long did you, did you, was your first open mic set? Was it five? Oh, probably about five minutes. And, and nice. I, yeah. And I, and, but I had been doing a few dates like I had been doing some stuff like for the rotary, like, or mm. for you know, like the preschool needed somebody to do a few minutes to raise money. I was already doing stuff, but when I got wow. to San Antonio, they didn't know me. So I had to do right. open mic, but they mo I moved pretty quick. I mean, I don't mean to brag, but I moved pretty quick. There wasn't <laughs> many people like me. I'm, I gotta say, I think it's helped me because I'm unique. And I say unique, meaning I'm a mom and I'm from the South and this is a real Southern accent. People, you know, have said to me, is that a real Southern accent? I'm like, do you really think I've got the strength to, to talk like this all the time? That it wasn't really my book. <laughs> anyway, um, Austin Cap City Comedy Club and see Austin's now the new hub of comedy in mm -hmm. the United States. I think that's going to be the next big place. Anyway, that mm -hmm. club has always been wonderful. And, um, and the woman who ran it, Margie, believed in me and and Aww. saw me at Chick Stick. I would drive there 45 minutes and drive back. And um, and she made me from opener to headliner for the first time in their history. I skipped being a feature. I, ve I featured very, I mean, I don't even know how many times. I could count it on one hand, probably. I went from opener wow. to headliner. And I don't know, I just started getting invited to festivals. And, and then... Um, they got on the view and I don't know, got a manager and all that. But I think it was because there wasn't a lot of mamas doing comedy. And I think, I don't know. I just, it, things started happening for me pretty quickly. And I've always had a good time. I've always had a lot of people believing in me and lifting me up and helping me. That I just want to pause for one second so that we can soak in how incredible that is because I just the fact that one married, still married to, uh, and all the kids that you had and being a mom, I will never be a mom. I, I mean, it's just not in the cards for me, but 
trying to imagine what it's like being a mom and then trying to pursue a stand-up comedy career. It's like you said there aren't a lot of moms out there doing this because I think it's so hard. And the fact that you did that and you got, you carved your own way. And I think it's oh, fascinating you, to see how you pioneered this path for yourself. It's well, really, thank really you. Cool. I've got a deal with Sony television right now for my own sitcom. And before COVID hit, I've had this deal now with them for uh, a long time because of all this, but we went and pitched mm -hmm. out in LA and I said to them, I go, I'm the Mrs. Maisel of Appalachia. And they said, that makes sense to us. But I do, if, I love that show and yeah. I, and her whole thing. But I did, I had to find another way because it. Well, I couldn't do the traditional way mm -hmm. and raise these children and then, and then be all right. And then I think, you know, I mean, I, their daddy had a big job executive for a company and was always traveling. And I had, I mean, it was just up to me and I wanted to be with them. I didn't want yeah. them to be yeah. with anybody else. So anyway, yeah, it, it has been a ball. I have, there's times, like I say, though, I couldn't get arrested. There's other times when it felt like I was on top of the world. It's been a lot of ups and downs, but I think that's show business too. I think mm -hmm. I know a lot of, like my good friend, Tammy Pescatelli, you know, she's been on top of the world and then she had sickness in her family and she's been the mm -hmm. caretaker, caregiver all of us you just have to shuck and jive and and hustle when you and when you can do what you can when you can you know and then the covid really put a dent in for a lot of comedians a lot of comedians have kept working yeah during this whole thing you know yeah but um but anyway it's it's been a fun ride i wouldn't take anything for it and i knew that it was supposed to happen i didn't know how but i knew it i saw it when i was five years old Mm -hmm. And I heard Steve Harvey say, I was looking at his, some of his, you know, he talks to people when they're putting makeup on people at Family Feud. Yeah. And I saw him tell the, his, the audience, he said, you've got to see it. If you want something, you've got you to envision it and you got to have faith in it. And it may not be your timing. It, it'll be God's timing, but, you know, you just got to... Um, you got to see it. And I, and I think that, I mean, I think, I know I envisioned it a long time ago. And so now this, all this happening to me, this tour and all that, I do. I think it's like little, like magic that like little, a gift from God. That he's going, look, girl, look, woo, look what I'm doing. I mean, it's just, I feel it. I feel it. I'm, I'm in it. I feel present in it. I have been, mm -hmm. I felt this wave come mm -hmm. when it started happening. And I'll tell you when it happened. All right. My, we were moving our baby into school in Manhattan and I mm -hmm. had hired these social media guys who were young and got long hair like you and darling and understand the internet. And I'd hired them and they put out that video of me taking my husband to Def Leppard and Journey. And I know we were moving her into this apartment and I said to my family, mm -hmm. huh, this video's being shared a lot. Something's hmm. happening. And they were like, yeah, whatever. Who wants a Subway sandwich, you know? <laughs> and I thought I could feel something and my heart kind of fluttered. And I thought, cause I'd already had dry bar and that had gotten a lot right. of millions of views and all that, but I couldn't sell tickets. Right. It wasn't right. selling tickets. Hmm. So then this video, they let this thing out and I just shot that on a whim one night. I'd never done it before. I just talked about taking my husband to go see Def Leppard Journey and how everybody looked old and yeah. had plantar fasciitis in their feet <laughs> and somebody happened to get it on film and they put that out and I, I could feel something happening. I could feel it. And oh. I would say to my family, like, I think something big's happening. And they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they've, yeah. <laughs> they've been through television deals with me and all that. And they're like, man, um, here mom goes again with all the <laughs> cookie ideas. And then, and then anyway, it, it just, I don't know, that was something different than all the 
material about my kids and all that. I guess it had involved men and everybody. Who doesn't feel old? Like when you go to these concerts and all these Rolling Stones, the, you know, the, they look horrible. God love them. But, you know, they, there's been a lot of heroin and they, a lot of nasty women and they all look, you know, beat up and down. And so I don't, everybody just can relate to that anyway. Yeah. So they, then these, these little darling boys, I call them boys, they're, they're young men, they've got children, they've got children, but they, I, could, I could have birthed them. They <laughs> have helped me so much to get my, to find my audience, like to put, mm. you know, when they would say, oh, my darling, what is updating? Oh, remind me later. What is that? Adobe Flash Player. Is that even still a thing? Oh no. Oh my gosh. Did I lose there you? we are. Oh, okay. I thought you were gonna be gone in a flash. Yeah. I'm so sorry, honey. Well, no, no, no. It's like dealing with your grandmother. Anyway, <laughs> all I was just saying was these boys helped me so much and get organized and they helped me find my audience. And, I, and when people told yeah. me years ago, oh, there's gonna be this thing called Facebook and you're going to sell tickets from shows from your Facebook page. I was like, what are you talking about? I could not wrap my mind around it. And it, and this is the day and age where you have to have social media and it has changed my career and it's no longer the local radio or newspaper. You know, you still get some mm -hmm. of those interviews, but it's, mm -hmm. it's this powerful thing and it's been a wonderful thing for me. Yeah. And thank God I had young people to help me, honey, because I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, hey, you know what? Sometimes you have to ask for help. And it, it especially if, if you are taking the time to be able to get better and better and better at your craft of comedy, um, there are people that can do other things that can help make it more visible to and find your audience, make it visible to the audience and things like that. And so I feel like that's really, really important because as much as we try to do things all by ourselves, it sometimes it's good to ask for help. And I, uh, you know, I try to ask my wife for help with laundry, but that doesn't always work <laughs> out, but sometimes it happens sometimes. <laughs> oh man. Well, that, that is fantastic. And I'm super excited to see you and, and the link to the tickets for the Phoenix shows are going to be in the show notes. They're all sold out except for the Friday and Saturday night late shows. Yes. So, the late shows, my darling. And, um, let me say, cause my manager told me, uh, I do have two shows. Um, and then uh, Lincoln, Nebraska, June the, June the 6th, I'll be in Kansas City, but I think they've, they've already sold out. And then I'll be in Lincoln, Nebraska, June the 6th, and there's tickets available for that if anybody cares. And you can oh. go to leannemorgan.com. Oh, and all of that's going to be in the show notes. So when you're listening to the episode, you can just tap your thumb if you're on your phone. Um, you can try it if you have a monitor, but usually if you just click your mouse, you can find it. And so you can get there. Beautiful. Well, Leanne, we're going to wind down with some advice from some questions from so that some fans have found across the internet that are in need of some advice. So we're going to answer a couple of those very quickly, and then we'll unfortunately say goodbye. But I know I wish I could clean your house for you, my darling, and fry <laughs> your chicken and put some clothes up y'all and help y'all okay oh, what do you want to know i appreciate it well one of our fans sent in a question they found on reddit and it says should i adopt a different first name for work purposes too many mats i am in an administrative position at a company with 2,000 employees among management there are 10 people named Matt. Beyond the fact that we are seriously lacking diversity, it gets very confusing and annoying in meetings. I have thought out adopting my middle name instead. Is this dumb? Worth it? I've been there for 10 years and really enjoy my job, so I'm not likely to leave soon. Whew. So there are a lot of mats. <laughs> there are a lot of mats. And you know, this is funny because the my writer for my second sitcom is Matt Williams, who created Roseanne and Home Improvement. And let me tell you, Matt's not his real name. His real really? name is Mark. That is his, um, that is his stage name because he started out as an actor doing commercials and he stuck with that name. And so, yeah, I say, if it makes you stand out, change your name. Why not? I, I love that. I, yeah. I agree. My name is Matt too, but I actually changed it to Stefan so that I could stand out to the, no, I'm kidding. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very gullible. Can you tell? You? <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> uh, all right. And then this last question, it says birthday suggestions. My friend's birthday was yesterday, but instead of celebrating with it, with him, like the last six years, I forgot and went out alone that night. All the restaurants in the open mall I was in were singing happy birthday to someone. I felt really bad and want to take him out for food. Any recommendations? Whew. Leanne, have you ever have you ever missed someone's birthday that was important oh, to you? I miss them all the time. I miss them all the time. I feel like I'm losing my mind and I've missed it. And I just have to say, I'll make this up to you. Um, any suggestions about what, where to take or to how to grovel or what am I, what do they need work with? I think the groveling, we need some <laughs> sort of strategy to be able to say, Hey, sorry, pal. I missed your birthday. The most important day of the year for you. Well, he needs to say, I'm so sorry. And I felt sick all night and I had diarrhea and I will <laughs> never put, do this again. And I will make this up to you. And I will fry you a chicken. That's always a good one. You promise somebody to fry them a chicken, double batter, oh. egg wash twice. Um, and, you know, and that, and tell him, I'm so sorry, and I'll make this up to you, and, and he'll be fine. Oh, that's, what I think. That's... that's what I tell people. You know what? I need to start incorporating the fry a chicken part because <laughs> usually it's a, some measly snack, a fruit roll up, and they don't really like that. So I think the fried chicken, there's a lot of love that goes into there that. There's a lot of love that goes into a fried chicken, honey. And people mm. appreciate that, you know, and who doesn't <sighs> love a fried chicken? Oh, I do. I can't remember the last time I had a fried chicken, actually. In Arizona, I mean, if you leave the chicken out too long, it will fry in the sun. But <laughs> other than that, we're not very good at that. So we just have the kind of boring baked chicken. But, well, that's oh. why y'all are all so thin. Y'all get out and, and hike in the desert. That's why you only uh, bake chicken. But you only Weight Watchers chicken. You know, you uh, can have Weight Watchers. It's it's free now. Chicken's free if you take the skin off of it. I was cracking up at that bit on your your special because my mom just she was on Weight Watchers. I think she's still on it, but she was telling me about it. How oh the vegetables are free and the, the <laughs> chicken is now free, and I was like, oh, okay, great. So fried yeah, chicken and like, eggs, no. but who wants that? You know, yuck. But yeah, all that's free. Just yogurt, Greek yogurt that has no sugar, that's plain, that tastes like. Well, I don't even know what that tastes like. But anyway, that's free. They go, well, that's free. And you're like, I don't care. That's not fun. <laughs> you know, you just sit and eat that tart, non-fat, <laughs> sugar-free yogurt. But anyhow, but good for your mama. Tell her to keep on keeping on. Weight Watchers works when you do it. That Yes, that's what I've heard. And she's done a good job. I think she's gone down a few pounds. So, yeah. Oh, she looks great. I tell her, though, she she looks great as is. So she doesn't need any uh any weight watchers but and that's why she worships you and say as he's the first and he's the sweetest my sister bought her the membership so that might be why she's the devil child no i'm kidding she did, no, she did. <laughs> uh well leanne I'm, we're gonna say goodbye this is the end of the podcast i know we mentioned your shows but is there anywhere else, where can people follow you what if, what else would you like to plug anything else um, I'm on the Instagram and Facebook, Leanne Morgan Comedy, and I am on Twitter. I don't tweet much. I think it's mean, but every once in a while, I'll come out with a fun, you know, something about J-Lo's perimenopause <laughs> that gets a few, you know, retweets. Um, and then I'm on that TikTok. I'm scared to death of it, but I'm on that TikTok now. And now my daughter, everybody watches recipes on there and people oh. dancing and doing but hey, i'm on that uh tiktok and liammorgan.com oh wonderful and that's all going to be in the show notes so listeners thank you for listening all the way through that's been a pleasure to talk at you and uh those you guys can just click there for the tickets to follow leanne support her please show her some love because she definitely deserves it and leanne thank you so much for joining again it was an absolute delight and i can't wait to see you at your show so Thank you, my darling, my angel. Will y'all come and y'all can sit backstage with me and um, and I can get in all your personal business. Can we do that? I would love that. And let me see 
if my wife, I don't know if she can do fried chicken, but maybe a Brazilian <laughs> treat. If, uh, yeah, yeah, that would be. So she's like Matthew McConaughey's wife, honey, when they make a slaw. I made that Brazilian slaw during the pandemic that um, Matthew McConaughey's wife, Camilla, beautiful. Yes. Right, yes. Camilla, isn't that her name? Camille or Camilla, it's beautiful. And she made a Brazilian slaw. And I don't know, he looks like he's scared of her, but he um, <laughs> he was like, oh, this is wonderful. And But I think he just thinks she's so beautiful, you know, and it, she just looks to me like somebody who runs it, runs the Are house. You- anyway, he ate her slaw. I prefer a mayo based, but anyway, I made it. Okay, you doll. Honey, I've had a ball. I've had a ball. Oh, thank you. Me as well. Me as well. Thank you so much. And thank you again for joining late at night. I know it might be, uh, it's late over there. So a a double appreciation, Leanne. It's been Honey, you're welcome, you angel. I hope I see you soon. Oh, thank you. Have a great night and we'll see, I'll see you at your show. Okay, my darling. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.